dear friends. How are you all doing? My name is August. This is Cozy Rosie Reads and the start of another weekly reading vlog. I hope you all are doing really well. Since my last reading vlog, I'm feeling so much better. I actually tested negative for COVID now, so it's all out of my system. I'm good. Feeling a lot better. It is Saturday morning. My mom actually just recently came back from a very long, I think it was like three week trip in Peru. So I finally get to see her today, which is great that I tested negative for COVID and we can all get together. So I'm gonna be hanging out with my family later today. Now for some reading updates. For this reading vlog, I'm not really sure where it's gonna go. I would like to finish at least one book and that book in particular is still Bride's Head Revisited. Who is surprised? Who is not surprised? I really did think I would have this done in time for this vlog, but I am now halfway. I'm a little bit half, more than halfway now. I am on page 178. So just a few pages more than halfway loving this loving it so much i'm just having a very slow time reading it and i'm kind of like milking out the experience i'm annotating it a lot i'm underlining so many passages in here that are beautiful so maybe i'll share a little bit of that what did i most recently like underline in here yeah so in here we're reading from the perspective of our main character charles and he has been kind of enveloped into his friend sebastian's family and some things are happening some tragedies are happening some very convoluted confusing things are happening and people don't know how to react to it and it reads a memorable part of the evening one of those needle hooks of experience which catch the attention when larger matters are at stake and remain in the mind when they are forgotten so that years later it is a bit of gilding or a certain smell or the tone of a clock striking which recalls one to a tragedy how freaking beautiful is that? But basically talking about how you feel this looming sense of something bad's gonna happen. There is this tragedy going on, but you're so observant to the world around you that certain smells or things will transport you to that feeling, to that trauma of that tragedy. It's beautiful, but I love that he described it as a needle hook. It's this sharp, pinning, tiny little motion so gorgeous so yeah the writing style in this is stunning absolutely loving it so definitely hoping to make more progress in this i really hope you're doing well i have no idea where the remainder of this vlog is gonna go from here so i just hope you can enjoy maybe make some coffee or some tea hang out with me and just enjoy a beautiful snowstorm and get cozy you know so i hope you all are doing really well and i'll check in with you all very soon
Good morrow, sweet friends. Yesterday with my family was so lovely. It was a little bit longer than anticipated, which is how it usually goes with my family. We're like, oh yeah, let's just hang out. And then it ends up being nine hours. <laughs> we got to hang out. We saw my mom's slideshow from her trip to Peru, which is beautiful. She got to go to Machu Picchu and it was just so stunning. And then we talked and hung out. We had dinner and then we watched Splash. Iconic iconic movie baby tom hanks like when is this late 80s early 90s maybe falls in love with a mermaid if you haven't watched it recommend anyway yesterday was lovely i did read quite a bit of brideshead revisited when i got home and then i fell asleep and then i randomly woke up at 3 30 in the morning and read until like 4 30 in the morning so i am now on book two a twitch upon the thread which is page 280 or 280, who do I think I am? 225. So we're getting closer, loving this so much. It was actually so sweet. I met up with my parents at Barnes and Noble and I told my mom, cause we were looking at like the classic books at Barnes and Noble. And I was telling her I was reading Bride's Head Revisited. Have you ever heard of it? Have you ever read it? And she goes, <gasps> and her eyes got so big. And she was like, I watched the PBS mini series of Bride's Head Revisited when I was in high school. And it was my favorite thing ever. It was like, it brought up a new memory for her and it was like the sweetest thing in the world so when i finish this her and i are gonna get together and we're gonna watch the pbs miniseries that came out in 1981. i also know there's a 2008 movie adaptation of this that looks so stunning so beautiful so atmospheric i'm definitely gonna watch that too but the miniseries the fact that like I'm loving this book so much, I can't wait to watch it, but then my mom, it's gonna be like this nostalgic thing for her, like, I think it's just gonna be really sweet. So we're gonna watch it together, I'm really, really excited about that. Loving this so much, so much has changed so fast in this book, it went from like romantic romps, like just so romanticize your life, like just teenage years to like, life has changed, <laughs> it's changed very drastically. But I'm still really loving it. I honestly have no idea where it's going. I'm so lucky that this is a classic that has never been spoiled for me. I don't really hear a lot of people talking about this book, which is fantastic because I have no idea what to expect with this. I, I love it. I want to definitely read more classics like this. So if you've read, for some reason I always compare this to Maurice in my head by Ian Forrester. So if you've read Bride's Head Revisited or if you know of any other kind of more classic literature that kind of feels like this, please let me know if you want to comment them down below because I would love to add more to my my brain of just like knowing what else is out there that I would actually enjoy, like a classic I'd actually enjoy. Like I mentioned, it is Sunday. I am going to try to chug my coffee um and then I have some errands to run when I was sick with COVID like just so much was put on the back burner for me so I have a lot of like kind of catching up to do I might have to run to Target for a few things and it's Sunday Sunday at Target is chaos but yeah I think I might have to do that and then I'm taking one big I think I have like four garbage bags full of clothes and stuff to donate to Goodwill so I might do that too let's go grocery shopping for miscellaneous items <laughs> Uh-oh, somebody better freaking stop me. I'm walking into Goodwill. Uh-oh! is out 
We just want to bask in it for a second. We're I'm going to put all of the books I thrifted away. Oops, I thrifted more books. <laughs> My bad. Right, Winston, I said I wouldn't. But um, I'm going to have to film a winter book haul very soon because my shelves are overflowing. The best feeling in the world, honestly. I, I'm just so inspired by all the books I have right now. I got some amazing finds. I am so geeked. Some classics, some books I'd never heard of but sound so freaking cool. I just wanted to share one book that I got because it's nostalgic and I won't include it in a book haul video and that is The Real Mother Goose. Did anyone else grow up reading this because this was the book of my childhood and I texted my parents and I was like did we keep our version of this? Like look at this and they were like we have no idea. So I got it at Goodwill. I bought how many books do I have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, I got seven books for seven dollars. I say I'm not going to go thrifting anymore but then the cheapness of it and the beauty and the goods that you find. This one is also inscribed. This is this copy is very damaged though. Look at that. That spine is completely off the book. The inside here is signed. It says happy birthday to Benjamin December 31st 1982. Yeah this is the book that I grew up with along with the adventures of Winnie the Pooh. Oh my god this is freaking sending me back. These illustrations are so nostalgic to me. Oh my god. <gasps> oh, I'm transported back to my childhood. This, yeah, look at those illustrations. This is the stuff I grew up on. Mm, who else grew up with this? Let me know. Because, oh my god, I don't remember this one at all, but frick is it beautiful. God, look at those colors. That is beautiful. This one is Mary Mary Quite Contrary. <gasps> Core memory unlocked. Core memory unlocked. Oh my god. Oh. Yeah. The hearts. This one's the tarts. The queen of hearts, she made some tarts all on a summer's day. The knave of hearts, he stole the tarts and took them clean away. The king of hearts called for the tarts and beat the knave full sore. The knave of hearts brought back the tarts and vowed he'd steal no more. How? Ah! <laughs> I'm so happy. Ah! So the reason I got this, other than nostalgia value, um, is that soon... Probably. Alec and I, my partner and I, are probably going to have friends that are going to start having kids. We're, we're nearing that age, which is wild to me. I still feel like I'm 19. We're going to have some babies in our life coming up soon, not from us. And my partner and I are at a time in our life where we are very positive that we'll never have our own children. That's just where we're at right now. But it has always been like my dream my life goal I think in life to be an aunt. I just want to be an auntie so bad. I want to read books and I've been collecting children's literature like thrifted books like this and so I have several copies from like the 50s and the 70s of children's like illustration books so that way one day I can read them to a niece or a nephew or a little kiddo. I just want to be a, that really cool auntie that is just the fun one, the weird one bakes cookies and reads your books and the tarts how fun this is a perfect one for a little little kid because it's just so bouncy rhymey i can't wait until i'm an auntie friends <laughs> that's like all i've ever wanted is <laughs> just to be an auntie so bad <laughs> i'm so excited so yeah got this i'm so happy but yeah i have all of these other books that I honestly cannot wait to tell you all about. Oh my god, they're amazing. Some I've never heard of, some I've heard a lot about. Some classics, whole wide variety. Um, I think I'm actually going to film my February TBR right now because the light is so nice and I'm just feeling really inspired and chatty. And so I think I'm going to film that video, maybe edit it, and then just relax. So yeah, I'm going to just be chilling at home I think for the next two days. and That's going to be fantastic and I'm really happy about that and life is good feeling really good. Got some really nice stuff. I can't, I'm so excited for these books. I'm so, I'm so excited. Okay, check in with you all a little bit later.
morning, friends. It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday. I'm dressed. I'm wearing some cool earrings my mom gifted me a while ago. Dressed, I have makeup on, ready for the day. It's Tuesday. I said that already. I have some reading updates to share. Reading, reading, reading. But first, I would be curious because I am just really struggling with social media right now of losing so much time on the Instagram reels and just falling down hours long rabbit holes. Would you all be interested in like, I feel like I wanna do a personal challenge kind of video of reading for an hour a day, reading for like two hours a day. I feel like it would really help me get out of this weird. I'm not in a reading slump because as soon as I pick up a book, I'm like immersed in it, but it's hard to pick up the book because I'm like, oh, I just wish there was a way that I could read in almost like an Instagram reel format where it's like short little chunks. <laughs> oh, I feel like social media is like melting my brain and I don't like how that feels at all. So let me know because I think I might plan that for some time, maybe next month or something of doing a, just a challenge for myself, challenging myself to read X amount of minutes a day or X amount of pages a day. Yeah, I think that'd be awesome. I think I really need it right now because social media is one, melting my brain right now, and two, it's just making me feel like I'm not using my time the way I want to. Like it feels like if I had the choice, I would definitely want to spend my day reading, but somehow I end up on Instagram reels and then a whole day goes by and I feel like I didn't do anything that I wanted to do, you know? Anyway, reading updates, let's go. Last night I finished Brides Head Revisited. Oh, she's matching my outfit. Look at that. I like that. I hope you all are liking the different positions I've been filming this vlog in lately. This is my desk. This is what it always looks like. It's just a little cluttered, a little fun, a little colorful. Yeah, I've just really enjoyed switching it up. I know you're a little bit further away than normal, but I kind of wanted to share my space. This is where I work. Hello. <laughs> it says hello. Brides had revisited. Wow. Um, I can't say I liked the ending. I think it was a very sad ending and thought-provoking, but I don't think it flowed well with the rest of the book. But I also understand the decision of how it ended. I understand it. This book is very heavy. Um, it starts out really light about Catholicism and religion, and then as, it, as the book progresses, it just gets more and more in-depth about religion, Catholicism, that kind of stuff. And our main character, Charles, whose perspective we're reading from, is so detached from any sort of religion. He's an agnostic. They make that very clear at the beginning of this book. And when he gets, you know, into this friendship with Sebastian, friendship, there is sexual tension for sure. Um, and this adoration of Sebastian, he becomes enveloped in Sebastian's family. They live on this huge estate called the Marsh Main House. And they're all very practicing, devout Catholics. So they have these very long conversations about religion and Sebastian's always kind of like fighting against it and arguing with them. So the book at the very end takes a very prominent stance on Catholicism and like conversion and finding God and that kind of stuff. But it's through a lens of somebody who's agnostic and who has to you know, make their own decisions about their life and people around them who are avid believers in something that they don't believe in. It's just very interesting, but I really missed the beginning of this book. You know, the beginning of this book is just languid, slow friendships, going to parties at Oxford, rolling around this giant estate, like hanging out. Really loved that. It was very romantic and moody and soft and tender, and I loved that. And then as it progressed into adulthood, more and more difficult things happen. Um, it just changes pace so much and it's very realistic. You know, we, we go from like this beautiful summery teenage adolescence into hardcore real world and relationships are more difficult and hard and there's strain and there's like chiseled personalities where it's like people have been forming their own paths for this long. So your relationship with them is going to change too because now they have changed or they've remained steadfast in something that you thought might change. It's just such a dynamic book and I really thoroughly liked that. I loved that the characters were so dynamic. Sometimes you'd be hating them and other seconds you'd be like, oh, but I get it. Like, I, I, I like you, you know? Um, really liked this book. For me, this is one that I feel like is gonna really kind of 
be in the back of my brain for a little bit and I'm really excited to watch the mini series of this and the movie and just fall in love with it even more now that I've read it. I think that there is a lot to unpack in here and I was annotating quite a bit and there are just some really really beautiful lines in here. One of them is at the very end here somebody is on their deathbed, I'm not gonna say who, and Charles says he's got a wonderful will to live hasn't he to the doctor and he says the doctor says would you put it like that i should say a great fear of death and charles asks is there a difference and the doctor says oh dear yes he doesn't derive any strength from his fear you know it's wearing him out um so the difference between a will to live and just a fear of death is very interesting like there are just so many introspective moments in here it flows so well between introspection and descriptions of a beautiful estate and surroundings to dialogue and character development. So it's just a very well organized book and flowed really well. I think the writing style was freaking beautiful, masterful, amazing. But the ending, the epilogue, I was just like, this is, I just kind of wish the epilogue ended on more of like a punchy note, even the last sentence. I just felt nothing by the last sentence. And the last sentence means so much to me in a book. I want it to feel like you did it. We're done. This is a feeling. It's either gonna make me think or it's gonna make me feel comforted. And this one just didn't do either. Eh, so it's fine. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. This is definitely like a four, four and a half star book for me. Not quite a five, I don't think, but we'll see if it lingers with me, I think. My rating for a book definitely stems from how does it sit with me afterwards. So hopefully in my wrap up, my January wrap up, I will have a more firm number for you all. So that's Brideshead Revisited. And then late last night and then this morning I have been reading The Call of the Wild by Jack London, this really funky format of a book. <laughs> Look at how it's spread out. So I'm currently on page 16 of I think this one has like 42 pages because of how it's 43 pages so I know I mentioned this before I read this probably when I was in maybe middle school or something and I remember it being really sad and frustrating and just didn't like how sad it was but reading it now is impeccable it's amazing I completely forgot that this entire book follows the perspective of Buck the dog. It's not written from his perspective, but it's talking about Buck. He, it's all from his perspective and what he's experiencing as a dog. And it's just so incredible. So the plot basically follows Buck and he lives at this judge's house and he is around other dogs and he just kind of has the lay of the land. He goes hunting with this judge, just lives a very like kind of pompous life. And I've been annotating so much in this book. Um, so I'm going to share a few little passages, but um, this is talking about Buck's family home that he grew up in. He had lived the life of a sated aristocrat. He had a fine pride in himself, was even a trifle egotistical, as country gentlemen sometimes become because of their insular situation. <laughs> it's like you can kind of almost imagine like a person with that description. So it's just very, uh, it's just so insightful and introspective of a dog. Um, I even learned a few new words, which is cool. I've been annotating. If I don't understand a word or don't know what it means, I've been writing the definition down below it. And that really helps me with the reading experience. I just love learning new words too. So one day Buck is stolen from his judge's house and sent to this camp basically, where these French Canadians are using him and other dogs as mode of transportation through dog sleds. And it is freaking gruesome. The amount of dog fights and gore in this, I was surprised. I was like, why was, why were we reading this at such a young age? Why was this in our curriculum? It is freaking gruesome. Like dogs mauling each other to death, biting other dogs down to the bone. It's vicious. It's a dog eat dog world out there. <laughs> But there are so many beautiful lines in talking about how Buck has basically transformed or almost regressed from this pompous living on a, an estate kind of dog to this very animalistic, carnal wolf almost. And how he's had to do that in order to just survive. Like he doesn't want to do it. He doesn't want to eat his food quickly or be protective of his space or injure other dogs or steal food. 
but he has to in order to survive. And there's this beautiful section right here that I would love to read out loud because the writing style is just so stunning. And I was like, I don't remember this book just like popping this much of a punch. Um, but it's this is a little bit into Buck's adventures of being a sled dog. And it reads, with the aurora borealis flaming coldly overhead or the stars leaping in the frost dance and the land numb and frozen under its pall of snow this song of the huskies might have been the defiance of life only it was pitched in minor key with long drawn wailings and half sobs and was more the pleading of life the articulate travail of existence it was an old song old as the breed itself one of the first songs of the younger world in a day when songs were sad it was invested with the woe of unnumbered generations, this plaint by which Buck was so strangely stirred. When he moaned and sobbed, it was with the pain of living that was of old, the pain of his wild fathers and the fear and mystery of the cold and dark that was to them fear and mystery. And that he should be stirred by it marked the completeness with which he harked back through the ages of fire and roof to the raw beginnings of life in the howling ages. So in that one, it's talking about the wolf's ah you know, very carnal, very animalistic, but so beautiful. Good Lord. <laughs> then there's another passage here I'll read quickly, um, talking about his old instincts and feeling connected to the generations of wolves and descendants before him. And it reads, there is an ecstasy that marks the summit of life and beyond which life cannot rise. And such is the paradox of living. This ecstasy comes when one is most alive and it comes as a complete forgetfulness that one is alive. This ecstasy, this forgetfulness of living comes to the artist caught up and out of himself in a sheet of flame. It comes to the soldier war mad on a stricken field and refusing quarter. And it came to Buck leading the pack, sounding the old wolf cry straining after the food that was alive and that fled swiftly before him through the moonlight. He was sounding the deeps of his nature and of the parts of his nature that were deeper than he, going back into the womb of time. He was mastered by the sheer surging of life, the tidal wave of being, the perfect joy of each separate muscle, joint, and sinew, in that it was everything that was not death, that it was aglow and rampant, expressing itself in movement, flying exultantly under the stars and over the face of dead matter that did not move. A what? <laughs> I always thought this was like a kid's book and this is just so beautiful. The writing is incredible. So I am, I'm loving this. I can't wait to read it. I'm hoping to finish it today. I actually really am enjoying this kind of format of the book, reading it in these columns here. It's very enjoyable. This is just such a floppy, easy to bring around kind of copy. And I, I really enjoy that. It makes the reading experience really fun and it kind of flies by. So really loving this. Holy shit. Like this is so much better than I anticipated. Like I, as soon as I pick it up, I'm just completely transported, completely lost in this story and this wilderness and this like, yeah, very primordial, carnal, vicious animals. Uh, so, so beautiful. Even just the descriptions of like warm blood in their mouths and bloodlust and fangs and, it, and teeth and claws. And like, it's just so rich, um, very rich writing. So really enjoying this. Um, on the agenda today, I actually might start editing this vlog right now and just kind of chilling out for a second, creating some fun stuff. And then later today, in a little bit here, I have to leave for a nail appointment. Getting my tootsies done, a little pedicure. I'm going to bring Call of the Wild with me. And then the rest of the day is just going to be hanging out, reading that, and then hopefully starting another book. I'd love to finish like one more book before the end of January. That'd be awesome. We have a few more days. I think I can do it. So I just have to figure out which one. I have like three shorter books left on my TBR stack for January. Hopefully we can pick something out later tonight and figure that out. So I hope you all are doing well. I'm just going to chill here for a little bit, work on some edits, and I'll catch up with you all a little bit later.
Hi friends. I actually have the hiccups right now so I'm gonna try my best to edit them out because I hate the sound of hiccups and I hate the sound of my own hiccups so I'm so sorry. I just finished The Call of the Wild by Jack London and I'm so confused by the ending. Like I'm having a weird Mandela effect. Like did I actually read this book when I was younger? Because I have no recollection of this ending. I remember the book ending with Buck and his friend that he ends up making like a man man's best friend dying together in like a snowy area i don't know why i remember that so vividly that imagery so like did i not read this book ever in my life i don't think i have because this ending was ugh. this is a very gruesome book and it has a lot of outdated language and slang and i don't think it should be a kid's book at all I have a lot of thoughts, but I think I'm gonna save said thoughts for my January wrap up, which should be coming out very soon because we're nearing the end of January. So that is that. I did get a pedicure. I literally told my partner I was filming and he's talking and making a lot of. I this <laughs> literally told him I was filming. Does he have headphones in? And does not know how loud he's being right now? Oh my god. <laughs> probably. He probably has headphones in. <laughs> so loud. Anyway, um, did get a pedicure yesterday and the color is called Melon of Troy, which I really like. If you made it to the end of this vlog, I just love nail polish colors. Write in the comments, because you all were so nice in my last vlog where I was like, if you made it to the end, like put your favorite emojis. I love that so much. It honestly made my day. I love seeing all of your different emojis and like your favorite colors and your favorite little icons. And it just, re it really brightened my day. I'm not kidding at all. Um, so if you made it to the end of this one, put down what you would name a nail polish color. Let's get creative. Let's have fun with it. Um, I think that would be really fun. I'm trying to think of one that I would call one. I would do one that is like a light baby pink and I'd probably call it something like Crystal Coral Ice Palace. I don't know, those words all together just like make the most beautiful pink color in my brain. And it might just be because I have synesthesia, but those colors and those words, Crystal Coral Ice Palace, I think it's just the C's and the I's and all the vowels so delicious so yeah let me know what you would name a nail polish color if you made it to the very end of this video so that's gonna be it for now i'm gonna figure out what i'm gonna be reading next i hope you enjoyed this one i hope you were able to get cozy and just kind of hang out i hope you all are doing really well and i'll see you all again very soon for my next video stay cozy my friends bye